Eight zero one zero one zero one double zero one here. Uh, today I am going to be taking apart my Asus Q five fifty LF laptop. Yeah, so let's begin. <laughs> this laptop has a bad optical drive, and yes, this is my laptop. Oh, and there's a computer down there. Reason why the side covers off of it is because I. Uh, ha is because I unplugged the optical drive so, so that way I could get the final smart stats off the Seagate drive I tore I tore down in the in the what's inside a hard drive and how does it work video yeah go check that out uh, pretty informative even though it can just even though it seems like it drags on in fact it, it does drag on it's over an hour it's, just over an hour long. I think I filmed about I filmed about 58 minutes of actual footage. So yeah, go ahead and get my torch bit here. That's what I need. Exactly what I need. Yeah. If you have a lap, if you have this laptop and you want to take it apart, you want to use a Torx size T5 bit or screwdriver. You probably can't see that now, and if you can't see it now, it definitely won't be seen after YouTube's compressed the living daylights out of it. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to begin by taking off all... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, all ten of the uh, Torx size T5 screws off the bottom of this thing. Now, this is the only special screwdriver you'll need. Just a Torx T5 s screwdriver or bit. That's that's it, as you'll see later. Now, as you'll see towards the end of the tear, as you'll see at about the end of the teardown, uh, the touchpad and keyboard cannot be removed because they are help cannot be removed uh, without having to glue them back in because they are held in with melted plastic rivets. Yeah, great, great job, Asus. Great job. Yeah, that's the reason why I actually got this on the specialty screwdriver set in the first place. Because I needed to get this thing apart to identify the optical drive. Optical drive inside of it. Also, I wanted to get into my um, Mac uh, 2010 MacBook Pro. There's all matter of specialty screws in there. So, once you have the 10 screws off the bottom of it, put up your Torx T5 better screwdriver and grab a Phillips head screwdriver. So, 2.5, size 2.5, and just grab a Phillips head screwdriver, and go ahead and literally pry the bottom off like this. You're going to want to, once you have a considerable size gap back here, you want to put your hand here, just lift up, and remove the cover. As you can see, it's pretty dusty. This is where it's not dusty. This is where it's dusty. Yes. It says clean me. <laughs> I'm going to do that when I change the optical drive. Now, always want to start 
by disconnecting the battery. However, it needs to be done. Uh, for this, for this model of computer, you, you want to remove the three screws holding the battery down to the motherboard and subsequently the case and the rest of the case. And once you have them out, there's a little tab right here. You just want to pull up and then pull the battery out. Here's the battery. Feel free to pause feel free to pause the video right here if you need to replace your battery. Okay? Uh, set that aside. Make sure you can't unintentionally short the battery and you should be good. Uh, next thing you want to do if you're doing a complete teardown is I usually pull the RAM at this I usually get get the RAM out of the machine at this point. Unfortunately it seems that Asus has covered up I think the 8 gigs of RAM in this computer with some kind of thermal heat sinking material like thermal heat sink tape, like thermal tape, literal tape. For, so unfortunately, I can't identify the the size here, how much RAM's installed here, without uh, using a software-based utility, whether it be a software-based utility in DOS or whatever, or unless I pull the tape off of these, which I'm not going to do anytime soon. And now uh, is the best time to get the optical drive out. Uh, you want to have adequate room on the side the optical drive's on because it cannot lift out. You have to slide it out. So there's a screw back here. Uh, you want to remove that screw and set it aside. Then you need to remove the three screws holding this retention bracket on. And set those aside. Now please uh, bear in mind that the screws on this side of the retention bracket are longer than the screw on this side of the retention bracket. So keep that in mind. Don't get yourself confused there. So, once you have that out, uh, you want to go ahead and just remove the retention bracket and then set it aside. And then you want to literally Push the optical drive out after lifting this captain tape. I think it's captain tape to free these wires up. Once you have that done, just literally slide the drive out. This, and if you need to replace your optical drive like I do, uh, go go to eBay and search GU71N. That's the model number on the drive, on the optical drive. That's GU71N. Search that on eBay. And go ahead and set the optical drive aside. Next thing you want to do is you want to disconnect these two ribbon cables. This one here goes to the hard drive. And this other one here goes to this I.O. board which serves up one USB 3 port and, the, and a full size SD card reader. Go ahead and flip these little black things up until they're vertical and then use the provided tab or just grab the cable itself. Uh, this, 
pull out. Now the cable for the hard drive is sticky right around this point on the other side, so bear the, so keep that in mind. Now you want to remove the three remaining screws. One's located here, the second one's located here, and the last one's right here. So go ahead and remove these screws and set them aside. Now the hard drive is held in with four screws, two on each side. For more rigidity, uh, there are also four screws that you can screw into the bottom. One here, 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 and here. Now, and uh, on this drive, uh, in this particular drive, whose model I'll show you uh, in, in a little bit, uh, in a little bit, uh, these screws, this, a screw going in here, and a screw going in here, will not interfere. Once you have the, uh, the three remaining screws out, you just want to lift the drive out. Now, this is a Toshiba MQ01 ADB100. I've never really had problems with these Toshiba drives. Uh, Though, I do wonder if Toshiba's hard disk manufacturing division is owned by Seagate. Yeah, everyone knows how much I hate Seagate. But if you want to replace the drive, grab this connector on the end here by the sides, and rock it back and forth until it comes off, and then unscrew the four screws, two on, two on each side, that hold the drive in, pop the drive out from the caddy, put the new drive in, put the screws back in. Uh, fit the connector back on the drive, put the drive back in the system, uh, put this cable back in, Put the optical drive back in, put the retention bracket back on, and get the machine back together. So, I'm just going to set this aside. My mom's on the phone. And next thing I do with the full teardown is I unscrew the one screw holding this I.O. board in. Remember, you've already disconnected the ribbon cable. I remove that screw. Then I remove the I.O. board, taking care not to damage the flex ribbon cable, set the board down, and then put the screw on the board. Next thing you are going to want to do here is you are going to want to uh, remove these two wires going to the uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. You just pry up and pry up. Then there's a little screw right here. You want to unscrew that screw. The card will pop up at about a 45 degree angle, just like so. And just wiggle the card out. Uh, set it, take the screw out, set it down upside down, and then put the screw on the card. That's what I always do. Now, this is the main speaker. There's a connector right here. Either you use your fingernail or a small flathead screwdriver to disconnect this connector. Next thing you want to do, it'll still be loosely in the socket. Don't try to force it out. Next thing you want to do, you want to unscrew the four screws and 
that hold the speaker in, and then remove the speaker by pulling straight up until it comes free, and then pulling forward to remove this connector from the so from its socket. And then you can go ahead and set the speaker aside. And yes, I have done this before. I did a full tear on full tear down on this a couple days ago. A few days ago. Yeah, just lift up and pull forward. Then you can set it aside. Now at this point you have a multitude of flex cables to disconnect. Uh, and and the LVDS cable for the display. This, and you also want to disconnect the uh, connector going to the CPU slash GPU fan, heatsink fan. Do not disconnect this connector as you will have to go into your BIOS setup and reconfigure your settings if you disconnect this. Do not disconnect this unless you intend on resetting your BIOS. So, first thing you want to do is disconnect the cable going to the CPU slash GPU heatsink fan. Now, you want to disconnect this cable, this cable right here that, that goes to the power button. Gently flip the little flat thing at the front up until it's about vertical, and then just pull the cable out. That's all. It's that simple. Next thing you want to do is repeat this process. The only difference here is that with this connector, the part you want to flip up is white. Flip that white part up and gently pull the cable out. Now, this cable here goes to your indicator LED goes to your five indicator LEDs at the front. It is not critical, but it's very useful. Try not to damage it. <laughs> this cable, this ribbon flex cable here, the part you want to flip up is black. Flip the black part up and pull out. Now, for these two connectors, uh, this is a two-hand job. You want to take a fingernail or a small screwdriver and pry and gently pry the black part of this connector out until it stops. Like that. Repeat for the other side while holding this side out. Try not to damage this. Now, this part should be pretty free whenever you have successfully loosened it up. Once it's loose, just pull out. This is the ribbon. This is the ribbon flex connector for your keyboard. Don't damage this, or else your keyboard will not may not, will, will not work properly. Next thing you want to do is repeat the process for this much smaller connector. This goes to the LED backlighting in your keyboard. Do not damage this or else your backlighting will not work. Once you have this loose, just pull out. This next connector is quite different. This is the last connector we're going to need to disconnect. It is the LVDS cable for the display. Do not damage this or else your display will not work properly. There's a little black plastic tab here. You want to just grab this tab and pull straight up until it disconnects just like so. That's it. Now this is where things get a little bit uh, irritating. 
you need to disconnect, you need to remove your CPU, GPU, your CPU and GPU heat sinks and heat sink fan. Now, you, now, there are small numbers, there are small numbers by the screws going from one to four. Unscrew the screws from four to one and screw the screws back in from one to four. Doing this in, not doing that and that not screwing the screws or unscrewing the screws in their proper order may damage your CPU or GPU. Now, please note, the CPU and GPU are both socketed and are non-replaceable. So, I'm going to go ahead and remove these screws. And set these aside. And the reason you want to unscrew the screws from one and screw the screws back in from one to four is because these these screws are is because you want to maintain even pressure on the CPU and GPU. Uneven pressure can damage the CPU and GPU and thus and thus cause them to malfunction. Now on your CPU heatsink as you remove the screws these these little tabs here will go back up. This is not a problem. And they will go back down as you screw these back down. Again, this is not a problem. Okay. The noise you're here the noise you're probably hearing right now is our washing machine. The laundry room door seems to be open. Now, lastly, there are two screws holding the CPU, GPU, CPU, GPU heat sinks and the, and the CPU, GPU heat sink and heat sink fan assembly onto the motherboard. One here and one here. There is no particular order you have to unscrew these screws in as this just simply as this just simply screws down to the motherboard and does not and does not rest on top of any critic in the CPU or GPU which are critical components that are pressure sensitive. Now once that's done you want to gently pry up on your CPU and GPU heat sinks until the whole assembly pops free. Once it pops free uh, use one hand to grab this part of, it, of the heat sink. Use the other hand to grab the fan and heat sink assembly. And just lift straight up. Now, right here is the GPU. This is a CPU. Now, now, if you want to, you can take this time to blow out the, the fan. Whatever you do, make sure to hold the fan in place to avoid damaging the fan bearings. How do I know this? Well, just put it, just put, just put it simply. Experience. Also, do not contact the thermal paste on the heat sinks and on the, and on the chips. Just don't. Now you're like, why do we have to go through all that? Well, there's a screw right here, right here, that's covered up by that whole assembly. Yeah, we had to take that whole assembly out just to get this one little screw. Now, once you have that done, you want to remove 
every screw that that remains. These screws are indicated with a white arrow pointing to the screw hole. Now, keep in mind, there's a black screw right here. No other screw will fit there. And this screw will not fit in this hole or this hole. Make sure to put this black screw with the motherboard screws. Now you might be like, pull the motherboard out, pull the motherboard out. Well, I can't do that just yet. And you're like, why? Well, that's because there are one, two, three, four screws for this display mount that just conveniently happen to go through the motherboard. Sarcasm, anyone? You want to unscrew these screws and set them aside. And then, you have to do one last step. That is to fold the display open. Now, if you need to replace your display, go ahead and take out all eight screws. All six screws. There's two on this side, four on this side. Now once you have that out, you want to use one hand to get a grip on, your, on this lower half. Hold the display down with your other hand and very gently pull up on the lower half. Then we'll put the fold the lower half back down. At this point, at this point, you can now remove the motherboard. Pull up on this side and and sometimes you may need to correct yourself here. Just do that by repeating this process until you can until you have enough space to remove the motherboard. Pull this up and then just lift out. And here's the motherboard. Here is the motherboard in its full glory. And these four chips, one here, one here, one here, and one here, that is the video RAM for the GPU. There's four additional chips on the back of the motherboard. One here, one here, one here, and one there. Now, this is a bracket for the GPU, and this is a bracket for the CPU. Go ahead and set the motherboard aside. Now, if you need to replace your power button, you need to... Uh, there's a little piece of tape here, metallicized tape. Pull, pull up on this cable to get a finger grip under the tape and then just pull the tape up. Problem solved. And then there's one last screw here. Just remove the screw and gently remove your power button board. Then, then set the board aside. Put the screw on top of it. Replace if needed. Now, you could have easily removed that without doing all this. But that's the last thing I do whenever I do a teardown, is just remove the tiny stuff. Now, if you need to remove and replace your display, lift up.
to about a 45 degree angle or thereabouts. Sometimes you you might want to sometimes you need to wiggle this. Get one edge out. Let's see. Well then. Well, optimally, you want to take a finger and you want to fold these up to just over a, a straight up. Sometimes this can be difficult to say the least. Now, fold this up to about where you got the display hinges and then pretty much just pull out. And then your lower half is out. And now you can and you can now replace the display. FYI, it's a touchscreen. And that's it. That's all. Now, keyboard, 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 keyboard. Plastic rivets hold the keyboard in. And same for the touchpad assembly. Now this is a two-part bottom half assembly. You have a plastic part and then an aluminum frame. The plastic part is literally glued to the aluminum frame. Yeah. So if you need to replace your touchpad or your keyboard, you're better off getting a whole new bottom shell. Which in that case, you'll have to do a full teardown to change out your bottom shell. So, I mean, it's really not worth going through the trouble of severing all these plastic rivets, getting a new keyboard in, and then getting, and then gluing all that back down and hoping it stays. Yeah. But yeah, if you need to change your touchpad or your keyboard, you're better off just getting a whole brand new, a whole new bottom shell off something, someplace like eBay. But before I, but before I close this video out, to put the bottom shell back onto the display, match the bottom shell angle to the to the approximate angle of where you put the hinges, and then slide it back on, and then fold it fold it back down and pull the hinges back down. Make sure to leave adequate room to slide your motherboard back in. And if you need help with that, well, here it is. Take your motherboard, make sure it's like this. Make sure this part here goes around this little stub. And then slide it in making sure to have plenty, making sure to not only get these out of the way, but to make sure your, your hinge here can clear the motherboard. But yeah, that's about it. And that's about it. This came straight. But yeah, this is the Computer Geek 01010100 here. Peace out, guys. Peace out.